Бог хвалит за Твоя назочность тут и над нами. Хвалит и да си послал Своего Сына Иисуса Христуса, нашего Дрешеника. Хвалит и Господь, который нас поклицал, да смо ми Христосово тело, да смо Твое тело. Просим о Тебе, да си данес разлиешь на нас по беседе, по спознанию, как Ти спознание и беседа нас бы освободила. Верьямемо, да си Ти жив мед нами, Те вабимо, подпирамо свое сердце и си добродошел мед нами. Небославу учету и Сину и Святому Духу. Ага, когда ты был за счету, так вот знаем себя и прикомай на маме. И научитка, и Сина, и Святого Духа. Аминь. If you're the kind of person that thinks God never answers your prayers, I have one prayer that He never fails to answer. Say, come Holy Spirit. He always comes. Always comes. So you know you, he answers prayers, at least one prayer. So it's very important that we be men of prayer. As we become men of prayer, we, we open our ears to hear what God has to say for the rest of our lives. The reason we pray is to hear God so that we can live a good godly life. Now we need to understand what it is to be living a good godly life. And tonight I want to talk about discipleship. To be a Catholic is good. But to be a disciple is much greater. We, want, we need to be in a relationship with God in order to be a disciple. Salvation is free. But discipleship will cost you everything. Salvation just takes a moment. But discipleship will take you the rest of your life. Salvation is something God does for us. But discipleship is something we do with God. Lots of preachers will tell you to give your life to Christ. But they stop there. We want to talk about being disciples of Jesus Christ. We, we need to take that next step. Because when people make a decision to give their life to Christ, and things don't work out for them very quickly, they'll get disillusioned and they stop their devotion to Jesus. And Jesus is not a salesman. Jesus He's not trying to talk anyone into following him. In Luke 14, Jesus talks about discipleship in very strong language. And he's very honest with us about what it is to what it takes to be a disciple. He says disciples worship Jesus. They serve Jesus, they follow Jesus. They obey Jesus and they believe in Jesus. They don't just believe in him, but they live their lives because of what they believe. So Jesus is going to ask you if you want to live a life of discipleship. He's going to say it to us over and over and over again. 
And here's what he's saying to us. Do not quit. Ne pomagajte, ne, uh, ne do not quit, do not quit. Ne sostavit, ne sostavit, ne Most people say, if it's hard, I quit. Uh, nas, uh, teško, uh, if it's hard, it must not be God's will. Ja, če je teško, to ni Božja volja. People quit on God, they quit on their marriages, they quit on their children. Ja, in ljudje um, odnehajo v bitu odnosu z Bogom, v družini, z, z uh, otroci. And some of us continually look for the path of least resistance. In večina nas išče pot, ki je lažen. It's, it's hard and, and I maybe need to find another way. Ja, je preteško in raj bi, bi šel po drugi poti na drugi način. Everything that matters is hard. Vse, kar je vredno in pomembno, je težko. Everything that matters is costly. In vse, kar je pomembno, življenju stane. Everything that matters will hurt. In vse, kar je pomembno, bo bolelo. And Jesus says, don't quit. In Jezus vse eno še vedno pravi, ne odnehaj. If somebody can read from Luke 14, 25 to 27. So I'm going to get a Bible. Ja, Luke 14, 25 to 27. I have it memorized, but I only in English. Za njim pa so šle velike množice in obrnil se je, ter jim je rekel, če kdo pride k meni in ne sovraži svojega očeta in matere, in žene, in otrok, in bratov, in sestr, vrt tega tudi svojega življenja, ne more biti moj očenec. Kdo ne nosi svojega križa in ne hodi za menoj, ne more biti moj očenec. So, no one teaches about love as much or as well as Jesus does. No one demonstrates love like Jesus. Yet in this passage he uses the word hate. Jesus tells us in order to be devoted to him, in pravi, če želimo pripadati njemu, we must hate our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. Moramo sovražiti svoje starše brate i sestre. Our own children, even our own life. Naš svoje otroke in celo svoje življenje. So what is Jesus really talking about here? Kaj v resnici želi Jezus s tem povedati? He is saying that a relationship with Jesus želi povedati to, da je odnos z Jezusom needs to be in a whole different category than our relationship with anyone else. V popolnoma drugi dimenzi in kategoriji kot vsi drugi naši odnosi. Jesus is worthy of our alliance and our devotion. Jezus je vreden v naše zvestobe in pa predanosti. No one can have a significant relationship with Jesus that compares to our relationship with Him. No other people. Torej, z nobenim človekom ne moramo imeti takega odnosa, ki bi se lahko primerjal z odnosom, ki ga lahko imamo z Jezus. In one commentary on this passage, it says this. V enem komentarju na ta vlomek je, God, he calls hate simply, use the word hate, simply means to love less than him. Ja, da beseda se obražiti pomeni samo to, da ljubiti manj kot ljubiti Jezusa. So following Jesus is his disciples' first love. Torej, prva ljubezen učenca je slediti Jezus. Behind Jezus is your family and your, even your own life. Everything. Torej, za Jezusom pridejo tvoje življenje in vse ostalo. So, every other concern is secondary to our following Jezus Christ. Torej, vsaka druga naša skrb je sekundarnega pomena, drugotnega pomena primerjavi s tem, da sledimo Jezus. No, most Catholics don't think that way. Večina nas katolikov niti ne razmišljamo na ta način. We need to start thinking that way. Jesus is using the language that comes from the Old Testament, the Bible. About the two brothers. Jacob and Esau. In Romans 9 it says, God reveals to us Jacob I loved, Esau I hated. Ja, Jakoba sem ljubil, Ezova sem se vražil. No, God didn't hate Esau. No, torej Bog ni se vražil. As we understand the word hate. Ja, to kot mi razumemo besedo se vražil. If you read the Old Testament, Esau was very rich, very wealthy, very happy. He had everything he needed in the world. Če beremo staro zavezo, Ezov je bil zelo predostavljen, imel bogatstvo in ni bil, da bi Bog se vražil Ezov. But God chose to work through the family of Jacob as the first. 
Ja, ampak Bog je vseeno se odločil, da bo um, posredoval po Jakobu vilini. So that's exactly what he's talking about in the New Testament when he says hate one and love the other. No, to je točno to, kar to pomeni v Bogu zavezi, da enega ljubim, drugega sovražim. The Bible tells us we need to honor our fathers and mothers. Ja, uh, Sveto pismo govori, da moramo spoštovati svoje stavke. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Je celo ena od desetih zapovedi. In Ephesians 5 it says husbands love your wives. Ja, v Efežanih 5 pravi, može ljubite svoje žene. In Titus 2 it says wives love your husbands. Ja, in tudi žene spoštujte in ljubite svoje muže. And the Bible just assumes that because we're made in God's image, we're going to love our children. Ja, in uh, seveda, v skladu s tem pismom, ker smo uh, ustvarjeni po Božje podobi, se razume, da bomo tudi svoje otroke bili deba. But Jesus says that our devotion to him is in a whole different category. Ampak Jezus uh, pa želi povedati, da je naša pripadnost njemu, torej uh, odnos z njim v čisto drugi dimenzi in kategoriji. And what it means to us sometimes is that uh, being a disciple of Jesus is going to cause pressure in our families. Ja, in posledica, ena posledic, bit pravi Jezusov učenec je, da bodo se zgodili pritiski in konflikti v naših družinah. Some of your family members may tell you, you know, I don't want you to go to church all the time. Ja, lahko nam do in bližnjo, najdražjih reče, ne želim, da hodiš v crkvo se. You're always reading your Bible. Do you have to always read your Bible? A moraš vedno obrati to sveto pismo, stano ga vedno. Do you always have to tell our children about Jesus? A moraš stano govoriti o tem Jezusu otrokom. If you keep this up, I'm going to divorce you. Ja, če se boš s tem nadaljeval, se bom ročil od tega. And you have to say, I don't want to divorce. Uh, in prvi da rečemo ne želim da I love you very much. Uh, zelo te imam rad. But I also love Jesus. Ampak imam tudi rad Jezus. And I will follow him. In bom sledil njem. But that shouldn't hurt us, that should help our marriage. Ja, ampak to ne bi smelo škodovati našim zakonom, ampak celo pomaga. Some of us experience that in our family lives even now. Ja, in celo danes to mnogi doživljamo v naši družini. And in certain countries and cultures there's actually a death sentence if you become a Christian. Ja, v nekaterih drugih kulturah in državah, če postaneš kristijan, ti grozi smrtna kazna. Uh, in some Muslim countries, as soon as you give your life to Jesus, they hold a funeral for you. Ja, v nekaterih muslimanskih državah, ko predaš svoje življenje Kristusu, že pripravijo pogreb za to. In other countries, there's actually, there's uh, what they call honor killings. Ja, in obstavljajo tudi tako častni uboji in umori zaradi tega. And Jesus is saying, in Jezus pravi, if you're going to really follow me, če mi boš zares sledil, we need to expect opposition, we need to expect Ostracization. Ja, uh, kar pričakuje na sprotovanje in nagajanje. Not everyone's going to approve of the lifestyle that you want to live. Ja, ne bodo kar vsi uh, pristali na to, uh, da živiš drugačno življenje. That even includes your own family, your own children. In celo tvoje družini in tvoje potrovci. Whether it's your spouse or your children, there's going to be conflict because of your relationship with God. Ja, in zaradi tvojega odnosa, učenca z Bogom, bodo konflikti z ženo za to. Who is uh, this, who do you want to put in first place before God now in your life? Ja, koga bi v tem trenutku postavili na prvo mesto pred pred Boga? Or what have you chosen already to be before Jesus? Oziroma, ali ste že postavili, smo že postavili kakšnu kakšnu stvar Boga? When you commit yourself to Jesus, Ja, ko, ko se prepustiš in odločiš za Jezus, you're committing yourself to a certain amount of opposition. Uh, se prav za prav že zapišeš temu da ti bo da se ti bo nasprotoval. You think of Jesus, he's not a hypocrite. Uh, ampak Jezus ni poličen. No other religious leader can make this request of his uh, of his people. Uh, no ben drug uh, uh, verski voditelj ne more od uh, vernikov tega zahteva. Jesus is the only one that says he needs to be first in your life. Ja, edino Jezus tako to reče, da je on mora biti prvi v tvoj živu. But even his own family came to one time and tried to take him home thinking he was crazy. Celo Jezusova družina enkrat prišla in da ga odvlečejo v stran, ker, ker je znoril. They thought he was too committed to his life. Ja, uh, kot da je Jezus sam preveč uh, 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 sledi svojim življenjem. His family turned their backs on him. Ja, torej je življen, uh, družina mu je odvrljila tudi kar več. Judas betrayed him. Ja, Juda ga je izdal. Thomas and Peter and others denied him. Ja, torej Peter in Tomas ga uh, zatajila. Jesus' hardest times was in loneliness. 
Ja, torej Jezusovi najtežji trenutki so bili takrat, ko je bil sam. His friends turned their back on him. Ja, celo prijatelji so se obrnili stran. And you cannot say you're going to follow Jesus. In mi ne moremo reči, da bomo sledili Jezusu. Unless you're willing to be treated the way he was treated. To be his disciple is to walk in his footsteps. And that includes all the way to his death. Jesus says, if need be, you have to pick up your cross and follow me. Follow him. Carrying your cross means a, a dead man walking. You've already been convicted, you've already been condemned. And you're on your way to death. You carry your cross to the town and people would uh, scorn you and spit on you. You, you, you need to be willing to carry your cross to your crucifixion. You need to be willing to hang on a cross. Your mother would be crying. And people would consider you cursed of God. And you could hang there for days. And Jesus says, if that's what it takes, that's what I'm asking you to be willing to do. And so many of us give so little to the one that gave us so much. We live in a day where it's easy to be a Catholic. The communists are gone now. It's you know, if we just raise our hands, say I believe, and receive the sacraments, then we do everything we want, and we still, he'll say, well done, good servant. That's not true. Between our conversion and our resurrection, is your discipleship. It's growing in maturity. Growing in devotion and commitment to Christ. Jesus is not trying to sell you something. Jesus is not a salesman where he sells you all the good things and then he forgets about the fine print with obligations Jesus shows up and he says this. I'm God. If you want to follow me, people are going to hate you and you might die. That's what it costs to be a disciple. Anybody want to be a disciple? <laughs> and there was a day when people understood this more. You know, now that communism is not here and other problems are not here, it's being Catholic is good. We're in a consumer culture. If you don't like this church, go to another church. If this priest doesn't preach what you want to hear, go to another priest. And you go wherever you go wherever you meet the least resistance to your will. How many times and how many ways have we already given up and quit? And how many times do we blame somebody else for making us quit? There's one missionary organization in the United States. They ship missionaries all over the world. It's a Protestant church. Protestant church. Protestant church. Yeah. And and when the missionaries go, they pack all of their things in a coffin, <coughs> all of their belongings. Yeah. It's a way of saying, 
I'm gonna die. Tu po meni simbolno rečejo, vem, da bom umrl. I'm gonna talk about Jesus until I die. Ja, bom govoril o Jezusu, dokler ne umrem. That might be in a short while, or it might be a long time before it happens. Sam vprašanje časa, da bo to prej ali slej. And they would write a final letter to their family. In napišajo poslovilno pismo svoj družini. And they would give it to the pastor to hold. In ga dajo pastorju. They said, in the case of their death, read this to my family. Ja, v primeru, da umrem, preberite to moj družini. And you see, you're going to die. Torej, veš, da boš umrl za velike. You are going to die. Ni vsi pa umrl za velike domov. You know, it may be soon or maybe a long time from now. Boče bo hmaro lahko zgrati. We will all end up in the box. Vsi bomo na koncu v škatli. So don't waste your life. Zato ne zapravljajmo svoj domov. Make your death count for something. Ja, naj bo smrt, naj ima smisel. Don't quit, don't quit on Jesus. Ne, ne, ne odnehajte oziroma ne. Don't quit on your spouse, don't quit on your children. Ja, torej, ne, ne odnehajmo v odnosu z Jezusom naših... Don't quit on, don't quit on the church and don't quit on opportunities that God might put before you. Torej, ne odnehajmo, ko bo naleteli na težave in ne odnikajmo se od svojih crpa. Do not quit. Ne odnehajmo. Live your life in such a way Živimo življenje na tak način, da when you die, at least your children will have something good to talk about. Da bi vsaj tvoji otroci imeli nekaj dobrega zapovedati o tem. And your grandchildren will be proud of you. Ja, in prav, in vnuki bodo bili tudi ponosni na. See, there's something worse than dying. Nekaj je hujše, kot samo vredi. And that's a wasted life. A to je pa zapravljeno življenje. One woman filled her coffin in this church. Filled? She filled up the coffin with all her possessions. Aha, ja, torej, ena ženska je tole krsto napolnila vse to zvore metje. She went on a mission trip and she was 20 years old when she did it. Ja, ko je to naredila, je šla v misjone in bila stara 20 let. Here's the letter she wrote to her family. Tukaj je pismo, ki ga je napisala svoj družini. Said, dear pastor, pravi, dragi pastor, you should be only opening this letter in the event of my death. To pismo odprite samo v primeru moje smrti. When God calls, there are no regrets. Ko Bog pokliče, ni nobenega obžalovanja. I tried sharing my heart with you as much as possible. Želela sem veliti svoje srce, kar je bilo možno s teboj. My heart is for the nations. My heart is for the nations. Ja, torej, za tja, kam odgrem, moje srce gori za te ljudi. I wasn't called to a place. Nisem bila poklicala samo na enem kraj. I was called to him. Bila sem poklicala k njem. To obey was my objective. Torej, slediti temu je bil moj cilj. To suffer was expected. Torej, trpljenje je bilo pričakovano. His glory, my reward. His glory, my reward. Torej, njegova slava, moja nagrada, njegova slava njemu, moje zadušenje. The missionary heart cares more than some think wise. The missionary heart cares more than some think or wise. Ja, torej, mnogi mislijo, da srce misjonarja preveč gori. Risk more than some think are safe. Ja, da stvegajo več, kot je nekje v mejah, nekje varnosti. Dream more than some think are practical. Ja, in sanjajo večje stvari, kot nekateri mislijo, da je sploh. Expect, expect more than some think possible. Ja, in pričakujejo več, kot nekateri mislijo, da je sploh mogoče. I was not called to comfort or to success. Nisem bil poklican k temu, da bi to lažil ali bil uspešen, ampak bil sem poklican k ubogljivosti. There is no joy outside of knowing Jesus. Ni večjega veselja nad tem, da poznam Jezusa. And serving Him. In služiti Njem. I leave you, my church family, in His care. Puščam vas in svojo crkev, She signed that letter, Karen, age 20. Yeah, in podpisala se je to, kar je ona to napisala, ko bo stara 20 let, Karen. You're gonna die. Yeah, bo ste umrli, bo umrli. Don't quit. Ne odnehaj. Do not quit. Ne odnehaj mo. They quit going to church. Mnogi nehajo po vhodi v cilj. They quit praying, they quit reading the Bible. Nehajo mo molit brat se to pismo. They quit serving Jesus. Ja, nehajo služiti Jezusu. And none of these people that quit are happy. 
And not one of them is going to leave a legacy that, that is admirable. Jesus has a second point. Do not quit. <laughs> In Luke 18, no, we don't have to read this. Luke 18, 28 to 2. It says, count the cost before you build the tower. Jesus is saying, before you commit to something, do your homework and make a good plan. Some of us commit to too many things. Some of us need to learn to say no. And not have, not have a fear of men. Uh, so it's better to do one or two things well than seven or eight things to incompletion. So Jesus said, before you start something, make a good plan. See, Jesus doesn't want a percentage of your life. You know, we always say he wants 10% of your money. He wants all of it. He wants all your money, he wants all your time, he wants everything. Now, no one makes that kind of request except Jesus. No one has the right to except Jesus. So don't go halfway and give up. And blame somebody else because you quit. Oh, I had a bad priest, so I quit. There are no bad priests. We all know. They're all good. In Luke 13, it says this. Anyone who does not give up everything cannot be my disciple. A disciple is disciplined. Getting married easy. Uh, getting married. Staying married takes discipline. Don't quit. Getting saved is easy. Becoming sanctified is hard. Having babies is fun. Raising them is hard work. Jesus is not going to lie. He said, come follow me, it's easy. No, he says it's difficult. Uh, there's a book in the New Testament called Galatians. Now, I never knew much about the Galatians. But a historian says that they were, it's a place near Turkey. And it's in very flat land, indefensible land. There's no place to hide. But they held their ground for years and years. And we wonder, how did they do that? Historians tell us they fought very differently than other people. When they would go to battle, they would bring their wives and their children down to the battle. The soldier would kiss their wives, kiss their children, and say, Daddy's going to go to war now. If Daddy loses, you're going to change your last name. The girls will be given to their men, and, and the wives, we don't know what they'll do with them. And you boys will be slaves. Now, if he wins, he gets to take his family home. If, some, if he loses, someone else takes his family home. But these men never lost a battle in over a hundred years. Because they fought differently. When you fight for someone that you love, when you fight for a kingdom you belong to, 
че се бориш за кралевство ким се наставно бориш другаче Today we replace fighting with video games. We, we, we do video games. Ah, yeah, video games. And there's no price to pay. Yeah, But look, look what's happened in Russia. And Ukrainians shouldn't win. <coughs> no way they can win. But they stopped in Russia. Because it's their country. It's the place they love. You fight differently. Men, the church is a place where women and children need to be defended by men. We fight the demons. And you do not quit. Now, I'm not looking to die. Uh, yes, But if it comes, I want to come for something. I don't want my children to be embarrassed by my life. I don't want my grandchildren not to have stories to tell. I want them to be proud of their father and their grandfather. I want to protect my wife and my children. That's my job, that's your job. We need men in the church. Men of God. We need to surround every priest in the world with 12 strong holy men. Right now there's 12 women around every priest in the world. Thank God we have the women. We wouldn't have a church. But now we need 12 strong men. And you're one of them. You're one of those 12. Don't quit. Don't give up. The church needs you. And God has called you. Could we stand? Father, I ask a blessing upon every man in this room. That they will become disciples of Jesus Christ. They'll commit themselves for the rest of their lives to serving God. And serving the church. We ask you to anoint them with the Holy Spirit. Fill them with wisdom and grace. Let them experience signs and wonders and miracles in their lives. Let them take serious to protect their families. And be strong men of God. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.